Um, so what I wanted to go through today is um, basically talk about early stage investing and what areas I find interesting in the space, but definitely I'm here to broaden my view um, and get your your inputs and on things as well. Um, the way I'm, I structured this is um, first starting out with some personal introduction and introduction to Blue Bear Cap Capital, and then um, more broadly talking about climate investing trends and where they are today, and then um, dive into um, battery investing with of a lens on, on, on software and data, and then uh, keep it open for discussion. Um, and yeah, starting with the first agenda point about me, my personal background. Um, I bring experience from um, corporate policy and uh, startup operations to the table. Um, before joining Blue Bear, I was a COO at two different energy storage startups um, and building battery based products, figuring out manufacturing supply chain um, technology. So we weren't building batteries, but battery based products. Um, and before that, I worked on the corporate side at Siemens um, and a group that's now part of Next 47, really trying to be bring um, innovation to Siemens business units. Uh, originally, I'm from Berlin, Germany. Um, that's where I started my career. Actually, um, on the policy side, and I have a PhD in mechanical engineering, researching biofuels. So I, actually, the work on biofuels informed very much my view on that uh, uh, for the automotive side, batteries uh, and energy storage are a uh, more mass suitable solution uh, than than bringing up biofuels. And then on the on the right side, I, I posted um, my board engagements um, where I'm currently in my role at Blue Bear Capital, but also my role at um, uh, as a personal advisor. I'm involved in, in startups um, uh, that's, um, and I think there are four three companies that are directly relevant to um, this conversation. Um, uh, Scone builds um, a marketplace for mobile clean power. Um, Acure um, uh, builds, why is this? Builds battery intelligence and, um, and Liminal um, builds AI and um, um, battery manufacturing uh, optimization uh, systems. So next up, jumping into uh, why, why, Blue, why Blue Bear and what do we do at Blue Bear, uh, we see that there are two historic macro trends converging. Um, one is what we call the energy transition, um, basically figuring out a new way to uh, power and fuel the world in a more capital efficient way, uh, moving away from, uh, from fossil fuels. And, um, the other one is the historic advancement in all things data processing and capture, what we now call AI. Um, and we see that there's an amazing trend, two amazing trends to be to invest in. Uh, we haven't started that last year. It sound, could sound like that, but we've been doing this since 2016. Um, and uh, and just see, yeah even more opportunity coming our way as the advance, advancement in both those industries are happening. Um, and then our focus is investing in, in the data and, and software centric part of this. Um, we see that obviously the energy industry is, is, is changing, um, but while this is happening, um, there is a lot of need to enable, accelerate, and de-bottleneck what is going on. Um, so areas um, that we're really exciting, excited, uh, that might not sound as exciting, but um, on the software side specifically, like the optimizing, um, siting, permitting, engineering, procurement processes, um, field services and maintenance is always are always areas that we see are widely underserved. Um, financing, insurance, and uh, and then yeah, the more energy traditional topics um, that that you're uh, you're seeing here. Um, so there's yeah, there's a lot to be done, 
and um, we all know that renewables are um, use have been used more than coal and are outpacing other um, traditional industries. So it's really exciting times. Um, where we position ourselves, um, uh, just also for the the startup founders in the room, um, really um, use the digital technology and uh, energy uh, solution kind of overlap. Um, our team comes from the energy side, um, both from the energy private equity world, that's where a lot of our LP base is from, um, and also just from like energy investing in general, um, traditional and renewable energy, plus um, the corporate and startup side of, of the world. Uh, so we think that we're we have, um, yeah, a lot of experience in the space, but uh, also, also always staying humble and learning as uh, you never know what's around the next next corner. Um, our strategy is investing in companies that are at the early growth stage. Um, so we don't look at taking the kind of binary technology risk, but we want to see that there's already some customer traction um, and then we invest in uh, high concentration strategies. So we only make like 15 to 20 investments out of each fund. Um, and uh, fund two and three, we're investing out of our third fund, both about $150 million vehicles. And then really continue to work with those companies we invest in closely as, as they grow. Um, and specifically also help folks take advantage of the connections into the energy private equity industry, which is about half the dollar spent in the US energy industry um, as on the private side. Um, this slide is a little bit showing on like hardware versus software. I hope that we can have more conversation about this. We focus on asset light businesses. Um, that can mean that like a lot of the hardware built is is somewhat outsourced or uh, or um, handed over to others. Um, we see that climate tech software um, needs less capital and there is a more aligned outlook on how there can be an exit um, that is yeah closer aligned with uh, with with fund life. Uh, but I think that's probably an interesting question that we can discuss discuss later on um, what and broadening from that view what are the different um, areas of capital that can be used to fund a startup because it's not just VC money that you can tap into which is actually pretty expensive but multiple other sources of capital so I think that would probably be a good topic to to look at later um, a lot of the data points that I'm using here and graphs are from a Silicon Valley Bank report that just came out in May. I found really interesting. Uh, they call it the future of climate tech. So I just wanted to highlight that some of these graphs are taken from there. Um, and just ending our, um, port, our, our the introduction to Blue Bear Capital uh, with a snapshot on, um, on our um, portfolio, which is the most important parts of yeah what we're doing. Um, uh, fund one um, is has is fully deployed. We're not making any new investments. The same in fund two. Um, fund three is is open, and we just started investing out of fund three last year. So we have active uh, dry dry powder to invest, as we say. And if you are uh, your startup. Kind of trying to also assess like who has actual money to invest i think that's also an interesting question um because yeah there are lots of funds out there and i understand that it's hard um for founders others uh, to see like who is actually a good fit um and um yeah how, how how to look at kind of some of the fund strategies and uh fund mm, um, lifetime over like overview where where folks are. Um, so, with that, I would jump into um, the next 
kind of chapter of this presentation, unless there are any direct questions in uh, to the introduction that we should cover right now. And I'm just jumping out of the full screen view to see if there are any raised hands or such. Kind of. We'll ask questions later on. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Um, so, climate investing trends. Um, I just want to go kind of start in the climate investing macro and then getting into battery investing and in some areas of focus that I find interesting. Um, first up, up, where are we today in climate investing from a venture capital perspective? So not just startups have to raise money, but VCs have to raise money to be able to invest. Um, and from up the LP side of things, so the limited partners, the folks that invest their money in venture capital funds, um, we see that um, fundraising fell also, not just on the startup side, but on, on, the, um, on the VC fund fundraising side. Um, but you can see that almost kind of, you can view it diff two different ways. One, it's like a pretty, um, pretty big drop to where we were in 2021. Or you can say, well, we are back to the levels where we were in 2020. So in my, from my perspective, I think that um, there was a little bit of a special situation in 2021, in early 2022, and now the market has normalized a little bit. Um, and we also see on the right side um, that the climate tech side um, is more has been more resilient than general tech in terms of how um, fundraising has gotten harder despite all the narratives that we read uh, on the uh, about ESG or such. So I think there is a fairly resilient market. And if you're starting to build a company in the climate tech space, I still think it's a terrific time to do so um, because you'll find um, if, if there's alignment with uh, markets, um, you'll find that a lot of potential investors to speak to and, uh, and um, yeah, I think there's a good good path to fundraising in that space. From a startup perspective, that's kind of the other side um, of, of the same metal, if you will. Um, the deal activity has remained um, pretty robust compared to 2020 as well. Um, there is a lot of dry powder out there, so a lot of capital looking for investment. Uh, but what we've seen that has changed is folks are looking a lot more into um, yeah, businesses that show some kind of, kind of capital efficiency. Um, and the drop here um, we see most predominant uh, or prevalent is the large deals. So it's been getting harder to raise these larger uh, rounds if you're on the earlier stage. Um, side, so pre-seed, seed, um, A and early B, there's actually a lot um, lot of continued activity. Um, but if you look at the top bar, um, like series D plus, so the really late stage funding, that's, that's the biggest portion um, that has declined over the, over the last um, year. 2024 has been looking a lot like um, this this trend um, that we've seen in 2023 um, and um, yeah so I think it's it's more in a stage consolidating um, this is a bit a bit of a busy slide um, I think I just wanted to mention that there is a lot going on on the tax credit side um, IRA funding and uh, and how this is actually decreasing um, technology cost uh, and this is i found really interesting uh, graph on the on the right here that i'm going back to again and again from um, from the folks at um, ctvc if you have not looked at their um, 
a website. I think it's yeah, it's always interesting articles, um, very interesting newsletter to read. I can highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, if, if if you look at how um, the um, IRA tax credit is kind of driving down battery manufacturing and battery pack and cell manufacturing costs by about 35%. Um, that's that's uh, pretty impressive and important. Um, and then, um, yeah, making kind of the, the track over t into the battery investing side with a similar graph, um, how the need for batteries is really growing. Um, two data points. One is the growing need for flexibility, just because we have reached about 60% um, of generation um, in the U.S. at times coming from uh, from solar. So the duck, duck curve is really um, the duck curve is is really important here, um, and um, with I mean. Why duck curve? Because it looks like a duck. Um, it's basically uh, the need for flexibility. That's the uh, the demand on the on the top versus the generation on the bottom. So we need a lot of flexibility here in on um, in the markets. And um, yeah, on the right side, batteries have been, especially the manufacturing side. Uh, they they have gotten a lot of the share on the 2023 U.S. climate investing, um, and that just shows how the market is responding to, yeah, to the needs and advancements in the um, energy, uh, ener on the energy storage side. So that leads me into kind of more of like our Bluebear um, capital analysis on what we looked at. What are the digital solutions around the battery value chain that we think are, yeah, that we see and that we are interested in seeing more about? Um, and we go about kind of creating these value chain overviews. They're helpful, um, not because we're we want to do these um, uh, market these. That's not the business we're in. Um, but just to organize our own thoughts and organize the conversation that we have um, amongst the team and with others. So we see a lot of opportunity around the design um, and selection, um, the validation and testing side, manufacturing and assembly, um, um, and then in-field performance and end of life. And there are different pockets um, of yeah, what what could be can be done um, to accelerate uh, the development, and out of that, then we kind of went into this big kind of okay. So what? Who's doing what? Who do we want to talk with? And um, and here we so far we kind of put the logos on the slide, and this is always evolving, um, and as we're having more conversations and looking at more um, companies and trying to make more investments. Um, this kind of this slide and the, and the, um, the spreadsheets that sit behind that is always evolving. Um, and I marked um, companies that have some kind of a hardware component with a little square, a little black square next to it. And the ones that have uh, that we have currently investments in uh, with a red um, uh, with a red box. And I'm kind of jumping forward to get to the end of this and also have a conversation with you. Um, just have some hypotheses that we I want to put out there and also hear what you think about this. Um, we see that there for like AI and Gen AI, there are th three main use cases for um, um, in battery R and D: um, material discovery, system level understanding, and validation testing. Um, and here are a couple of company names that uh, that come to mind. Um, and then there are 
the considerations that we have uh, for investing in space, the, the market size selling to battery manufacturers is so far not very exciting. We see a lot of hesitation in the space from battery manufacturers to try out new things and to um, look at specifically kind of black box AI where you don't know what's actually happening. Everybody wants to have the transparency around the AI and then maybe build their own and just kind of smarten themselves up. Um, the model accuracy we see as an issue uh, because just getting the large enough data sets to train AI on this uh, might be uh, yeah might not make this to be all as exciting as startup space and then trust um, sharing data and and um, creating this trust with your customers and or scientists or whoever it is um, to share uh, the large enough amount of data. So that's kind of some considerations that we're having um, in the AI for, for battery and R&D. Um, the other area we've took in, taken a deeper look at is kind of the end of life battery market, which we find always interesting and see as it's growing um, and track it. Um, fun fact, actually, at Blue Bear, uh, at, before Blue Bear, uh, when I was at, at Freewire, we built battery back, uh, Second Life battery back products, um, and there was lots of interesting findings here. Um, so yeah, supply chain traceability we find very interesting as a space. Um, as yeah, there's there's a lot to be tracked: uh, materials, batteries, manufacturing processes, um, all kinds of um yeah system level understanding not just uh not just sell themselves um then there's quite a, or there are a couple of folks getting into marketplace as a service like how can we track these batteries and then make them available to the market and um also towards yeah the end of life interesting areas um liability management um, really figuring out how to build products and extend warranty, um, manage warranty and claims, um, uh, just helping people manage the batteries they have and, and not treat them as a black box. We have an investment in space in a company called Scone. Um, they're based in the Netherlands, so they're not Scone, but say they're called Scone. Um, they're not in the Second Life battery um, space yet, um, but are looking into into that as well and that's my last slide here um, those are the two current investments that we have in the battery software ecosystem Acure and Scone um, Acure builds battery um, intelligence and optimization uh, mostly for in-field performance um, and have some ideas in the manufacturing and test optimization and scone I already described before. Um, and yeah, opening up for discussion, this is uh, AI generated image on <laughs> Blueberry's investment thesis. <laughs>